Uh, we're going to talk about Tulsi because she's been in the news. She's been back in the fucking news cycle again. And uh, uh, I, I am going to get into the defamation lawsuit here in just a minute. But about a month ago, there was a Yahoo article where they basically blatant, like it was a blatant fucking lie about about Tulsi Gabbard, right? Because uh, Yahoo News claimed that she's uh, encouraged by Trump to be a spoiler. That's what they say, right? That she's encouraged by, like, they're fucking hanging out, the White House bar. Trump's like, be a spoiler, be a spoiler. Like, I don't think he's, look, I don't think Trump is like a megalomaniac playing 3D chess with, with, with his, his, uh, his time in office. That's, I don't think he's, I don't think he's capable of doing something like that. I don't think that he's a good guy. He's not, like, I don't agree with the shit that he does. Uh, he's, he's just a rich guy playing the odds. Uh, and, you know, he manipulated a whole bunch of people and, uh, and lied to them. And, and now he's in office and, and, and now his lies are coming into fruition. Um, you know, and I don't think he's scheming. It's not a fucking spy movie. They're <laughs> like, like, Tulsi Gabbard's the Manchurian candidate. She's waiting for Trump to say the key word or the f- key phrase, and it's probably grab him by the pussy. Once he says grab him by the pussy, she's going to take down the country. <laughs> like, what fucking Hollywood fantasy is corporate media trying to live out? That, But that's the headline. The headline claims that she's she's... People aren't gonna fucking read the. This is this is capitalizing on the laziness that people have. Do you know how many fucking times somebody reads a headline and gets like gets reactive about it? They don't actually go in and be like, hmm, I wonder what this article is really about. They don't like people don't do that. It's capitalizing on on the emotional reactivity of people. So they see something like that. They see like, oh, tr- oh, she's colluding. She's gonna be a spoiler because that's what Trump. Oh, it's Trump. Oh, we're living out our fucking weirdo fantasies. Oh, we're doing it. Get the fuck out of here. People read those headlines, and that's what Yahoo News was counting on. They read the headline. Maybe some of them will click on the article and read one or two of the fucking paragraphs. And then that's it. They're not reading the article. They're not digging down a little bit further to, you know, they're not looking at looking at what agendas Yahoo News is trying to push. And what they're trying to push is McCarthyism with no proof, as usual. As fucking usual. They tried to push McCarthyism with absolutely no proof. That's what they do. This is a quote from the article. Given the bad blood between Gabbard and the Democratic Party, it's easy to imagine her pursuing a third party run. You fucking proved your own statement to be false. You may, it's easy to imagine. Oh, we're imagining this. Oh, good. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you've turned journalism into the imaginarium of Dr. Emporium. Or what was it, Dr. Emporium's imaginarium? It was a movie. It was weird, I think. <laughs> but, like, you're just like, oh, if we use our imaginations, get rid of all of the facts, uh, and just start making shit up. Um, I, Tulsi Gabbard... Making a third party play with the Green Lanterns. Uh, she's going to do it. She's going to use the powering, use that willpower, uh, make some light constructs, uh, and, and, uh, and, and punch her way into the White House. That's what that, I mean, you might, like, what are you talking, like, you use the word, it, it's easy to imagine. You have no fucking proof behind any of this shit. Also, no, she's not. It's not easy to imagine, especially because she said repeatedly so many different times that she won't. 
right? Like she has said so many times in interviews, I'm not running for a third party because I'm trying to reform the Democratic Party. There's an article a couple months ago that I uh, that I saw, um, and uh, it, it, it titled "Tulsi Gabbard represents." Uh, the reason why Democrats hate Tulsi Gabbard is because she represents everything that they uh, are actually supposed to stand for. <laughs> and I ended up reading the article, right? And it was like, anti-war, pro-people, standing by the union, standing by the working class, like, uh, standing up for social issues and equality and, like, all of this shit that she stands for, the Democratic Party doesn't fucking stand for it. I didn't register as a Democrat because I want to I wanna vote for either Tulsi or Bernie in the primary. I'm not a fucking Democrat. No fucking way. Thirdly, so the fuck what? Who cares if she wants to run for a third party? That we need to have more of that shit. We need to have more parties. They always call for these third parties as spoilers. Oh, they're taking votes away from Democrats. The, no, not all of them. Besides, you really fucking think a green part, a hardcore green party member, is really gonna vote de- for a Democrat? You really think a fucking hardcore libertarian is voting Republican? Fuck no! They're voting for the party they believe in. And we should have more parties in this country. We need more voices represent. We it, this this fucking blind duopoly that we live our lives in. It's either this or that. That's not how fucking. That's not how the world works. It's not this oversimplified shit. Guess what? Human beings, with all of this shit that we've made up, we we made up politics, we made up the economy. We added all these rules to ensure that people that want to stay rich and powerful get to stay rich and powerful. That's what's complicated it. So it's not black or white. A lot of different things go, go, go into them. A lot of different reasons. So you kind of have to weigh it out. You kind of have to look at those things. I think we, we want the world to be oversimplified. We want the world to be morally morally uh, simple, right? It's either good or bad. It's there, there's no fucking gray area. That's why it's like whenever people ask me a question about Tulsi Gabbard, I just, this, I, 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 there, there, there's a profile of me as a, as a new voter uh, in the independent that just came out. Um, which, you know, kind of a... Uh, I, I was curious to see what the article would turn out to be based on the answers that I would give them because I'm not fucking... I'm not the pro-establishment guy, right? I, I, I don't like Mayor Pete or fucking Elizabeth Warren. I'm done. I like, I'm out with Elizabeth Warren, man. I, I'm out, you know? Like, I can't vote for her after the shit that she pulled with Bernie. Uh, I, I, you know... I, uh, on, on that point, too, I do think that this is the time for um, Tulsi and Bernie supporters to stop being at odds with each other and, and, and really unite uh, behind a progressive ideology um, and ha- stop having this, this kind of pissing contest with each other. That kind of bothers me. I, I, I'm a supporter of both candidates. Uh, I, I also like Andrew Yang. Andrew, I've, I've had some issues with Andrew Yang. Uh, I've expressed my issues with Andrew Yang. <laughs> Some people have gotten mad at me for my issues with Andrew Yang. Um, and, uh, you know, but I, but I do think that it's time for, for people to stop shitting on other people for which progressive they want to fucking stand behind. Uh, because, again, that mentality goes into this, this notion of duopoly. And really, like, it's... It's just buying into the fact that only Bernie is allowed to be the progressive candidate. Uh, or only Tulsi. You know, like it's... We need... We should be excited that there are, there's more than one progressive voice on that stage. And... There is nothing wrong with with voting for a third party. There is nothing wrong with running in a third party. There's nothing wrong with registering as a third party. We need more fucking voices. It's not morally black or white. I wish the Black Panther Party would run for president. That'd be fucking wild. 
<laughs> That'd be fucking wild, man. I'd vote for the BPP candidate so quick, dude. <laughs> oh, man, it'd be awesome. Imagination is not journalism, people. But there's a there's an editor's note at the so in this article there's an editor's note at the bottom uh, that uh, that states about Yahoo uh, that that basically states uh, that uh, uh, Gabber told Yahoo News that she's not planning to run for uh, under a third party. So there's an editor's note that basically says, hey. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard says that she's not going to run for a third party. But we just put, we're just going to put it in this editor's note in, uh, uh, in, in this grayed out font, very small at the bottom, and, uh, and maybe people will see it. It's like, how much more of a fucking blatant lie does that need to be? Like, you just basically admitted to being like, we're lying to you. She talked to us and said she's not going to do it, but we're going to make it look like she is. Because Hillary Clinton. Like, that's... What a blatant fucking way to lie. You're not journalists. You're a bunch of hacks. You're a bunch of lying hacks. That's what corporate media does. It's fucking ridiculous, right? And, and then you wonder why she filed for this defamation suit. $50 million is what she's suing him for, right? Um, she put this out. She put out a video explaining, um, you know, what she did and why she did it. Um, I think she defamed. I think she was defamed. Hillary Clinton blatantly fucking defamed this woman who is a sitting congressman, who is, in the, who is a veteran currently in the Army National Guard, has passed legislation after legislation, uh, progressive legislations, has a bunch of progressive uh, legislations introduced in the House, and he called her a Russian asset. Why? Because you can't accept the fact that you lost to a huckster, and that she didn't want to support your pro-war, pro-corporate, pro-globalist ass. So, she called it a Russian asset in October, uh, and the repeated smears. I mean, you got you. I mean, you saw it. You, you, you saw it get picked up by basically everybody that was was um, controlled and owned by the Clintons. CNN, Bakari Sellers was going on there, uh, and just kind of just jamming the. He was doing it before the before the October debates that she was in, um, and he just said it, and everybody was like, "That's a pretty big claim. Do you want to maybe?" say something about that and he was just like hey I said it I'm saying it because I'm saying it you know I said it because I said it and I'm saying it because I'm saying it and the words are there and it's here and uh, and it's in my mouth and I made it come out and everybody was like but those aren't reasons what <laughs> So she sued him, $50 million. Um, Here's the thing. I am a little conflicted about this. Uh, And by the way, the lawsuit is... uh, Kim Iverson did a a breakdown. She she read the whole thing. It's got some stank in it, man. She's got some fighting words in there, you know? Like... like, There's a lot of points where she's just like, you know that election that Hillary lost? (laughs) Just kind of jamming her for it. It's just really, it's kind of funny, uh, you know. But they they talk about um, how she is a patriot. She cares about the country, and she has this record of service. Uh, go, you know, going out as kids, and they would clean up the beaches, and they, you know, she's been serving in some sort of a government office, and she was like twenty one or something. I think twenty one. Uh, but you know, so, so it's like she's been in office for a really long time. Uh, everything that she's done has been a, in, in, in the mindset of the American people. Um, so, 
Hillary Clinton claiming that she is an asset of a foreign country, uh, that she is, uh, you know, participating in American government on behalf of a foreign country, seems so ludicrous. And then the people that fucking corroborated it. And there was a bunch of people that, um, you know, were like, oh, I can't support her. I can't support her because, because look, look at what Hillary Clinton said. I don't support Hillary Clinton either, but, you know, but she said it. Well, it's because, you know, Hillary's got a little bit of notoriety. She's got that fame that people like. Uh, anybody famous, people will fucking chomp at the bit to just believe whatever the fuck they say. And there's no proof behind what, what she's saying, so... I'm, I am uh, I am a little conflicted because, honestly, like, I'm not sure what's going to come out of this. Uh, $50 million, big amount. Um, but really what, what Tulsi's doing here is that she's showing these, these elites uh, that, are, that are using their power um, for defamatory purposes, for, for, for uh, not good purposes, to be like, hey, we're not going to fucking stand for it. You know, in, in Tulsi's video, she basically comes out and says, if, if uh, Hillary Clinton can go after and smear and defame using zero facts, um, a sitting congresswoman, someone in the Army National Guard, a veteran in America, uh, they can do it to anybody. Anybody that, that opposes them, that challenges them, that uh, basically that, that pushes back on their, uh, uh, on, on their power, they can defame them, and they'll use their media proxies to to kind of spiral that out. That's kind of what they did. So, you know, um, I don't know, but I don't know what's going to come out of it. What she is doing is that she's using their own tactics against them. That's where the elites get pissed off. When you start using facts against them, when you start bringing up Hillary Clinton's real record about how she wasn't on the side of social justice, on the side of criminal justice reform, uh, people of color, women, the gay community. And then when she was making her bid to become president, all of a sudden it all changes. Whenever there was whenever whenever there was a financial incentive, all of a sudden those those beliefs change. If you point that out, they get pissed and they and they say that uh, well you're being mean you're angry you're this you're that and they start the name calling and they and then they just start making shit up about you. Um, and that's what we're seeing now. So I am conflicted to to I don't know what's going to come out. I, maybe something, but it's cool. It's good to know that there are people that are going to hold these elites' feet to the fire. And maybe that's what this is a demonstration of, because she also sued Google, um, which, you know, progressives and, and her supporters had no fucking problem with that. Her lawsuit towards Google for, for killing her ads and providing zero explanation after she was trending as the most Googled candidate after the first debate. Uh, I mean, they're trying to, they're trying to kneecap Tulsi's campaign. And so are the Clintons, because every time that woman is on television, Tulsi Gabbard becomes the most Google candidate. Every fucking time. Without fail. They don't give her a chance to talk, and when she does talk, she's just, she's so enlightening and articulate and authentic that people are like, let's find out more about this lady. And, uh, and they're, and they're preventing all that. I don't know what's going to come out of it. It is going to put Tulsi in the spotlight a lot more. And I, and I hope that it does raise her profile. But this sort of offensive maneuvering though, is why I think a Tulsi Bernie ticket would be the best because Bernie doesn't really go offensive a lot. Um, when it comes to shit like this, but but the fact that Tulsi does, and Tulsi kind of brings over a specific cross section of people, I think a burning Tulsi ticket would 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 very easily defeat Trump. 
Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, please share it. Share it with your friends, share it with your enemies, share it with whoever you think would enjoy uh, content like this because uh, content like this, anti-establishment content like this uh, that talks about ideas and philosophy that uh, you don't hear on the mainstream doesn't really get shown to a whole lot of people all that often. Uh, so by sharing and by hitting the like, uh, it helps get seen by more people. Um, and please, if you enjoyed this video as well, uh, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my page, uh, because I put videos like this up every single week where I talk about sociopolitical issues, uh, philosophy uh, issues, uh, nerd culture, uh, a, a, a bunch of different types of stuff. Um, I do uh, various different podcasts from uh, videos like this, which are a little bit more loose, uh, to more structured written videos uh, uh, about current events and bigger ideas on this channel. Uh, so make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell. And if you enjoy videos like this, you might also enjoy my live stand-up comedy. Uh, I'm going to be on tour all across the country. Uh, you can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com, to see if I'm coming to your city, city near you and grab your tickets. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be in Boston, Massachusetts, Portland, Maine, South Royalton, Vermont, Middlebury, Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, uh, Rochester, New York, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Springfield, Missouri, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, where else am I? I'm going all over the damn place, you guys. Uh, go check out that calendar. Go get your tickets. Come hang out with me. And uh, I hope to see you guys at a live show. Thank you guys so much for tuning into to this video. And I hope to see you guys again. We'll see you on the road, folks. Thanks again.